it's red. Hello? Oh, there it is. Okay. All right, so tonight Mike is going to be talking about fellowship with God. So it's going to be a good word tonight. A um, couple announcements. We do have books for sale in the bookstore after the service. Uh, Mike has a specific book that he wrote in there that's about mental illness. So if you have any um, questions or unanswered questions about mental illness, he's written a book about it. It's called Plano Spirits, and I think the other one is There is a Boogeyman. He sells them for about $10, and they are written by Mike. Um, and does anybody have any testimonies? Anyone had any, anything amazing happen? God do anything this week in your life? No? Okay, you want to share? Sure. Long time. Hi, my name is Charlie Tadano. Okay, uh, I've got a friend of mine named Dave Andrade. I haven't seen this guy in 25 years. Uh, I met him when I was in eighth grade, and we were good friends through high school and stuff. Now, I was a really bad guy in high school. I grew up in the west side. David was not quite as bad, but I tried to corrupt him as much as I could. Now, we haven't seen each other in 25 years, okay? Um, I've come, I love Jesus, okay? And, you know, so I've been trying to find him for 25 years on Facebook, going on the Internet, I mean, all kinds of things like this. Little did I know, God's been working in his life, okay? So... He's experienced healings. He, you know, he loves Jesus just like I have. And for some reason, it seems we're, we've been talking about it. it looks like God kind of kept us apart while we were still bad. And Monday, he brought us together. So I haven't seen this guy in 25 years. And all we're doing is just talking about, wow, how the Lord has just changed your life. And so when he told me that he had experienced some spiritual healing, had to bring him down here so he could check this place out. That's awesome. Welcome. You're in for a real treat, especially tonight's word about fellowship with God. It's going to be a really good, powerful message. Um, also, I think I went over the books. Uh, we're going to be opening that up after the service for a few minutes. So if you guys are interested, just definitely visit the bookstore. We have a lot of other uh, books that Mike has chosen that he feels is related to deliverance and the type of ministry we do here. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and pray. Does anybody else have a testimony? Who's here for the first time other than you, sir? Hi, welcome. Awesome. How'd you hear about us? Your friend? Great. That's perfect. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and pray. Are you new too? Great. Welcome. Lots of new people. Welcome. Yeah, glad to have you here. Okay, we're going to go. I'm going to go ahead and just pray for the service. Okay, Father God, thank you so much for this evening, Lord. I just thank you, God, for all the people you brought here tonight, God. I pray, Lord, that you open our hearts to move in our, in our hearts tonight, Lord, to teach us about how to fellowship with you the right way. And I just pray for every person in this room tonight, Lord. I pray that you'll open their hearts and their minds. I pray that you will answer every prayer and every need that they came here for, God. And I just pray for deliverances and healings tonight. I thank you for every miracle in advance, God, that you're going to do in our lives tonight, that you're going to change us. You're going to heal us and deliver us, Lord. We just thank you and we praise you. Um, in Jesus' name, amen. 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 Good evening. Good evening. Uh, is Sunday Father's Day? Yes. This Sunday? Yes. All good. We don't have services on Sunday here because we're not a church. This is a healing center. So we might as well celebrate Father's Day right now. Your Heavenly Father's Day. Amen. Yes, sir. Stand with me. Now, technically, every day is your Heavenly Father's Day, but... I'm going to pretend it's a Sunday, and we'll move it up here to Friday, right? And celebrate our Heavenly Father's Day. Father, as Jesus said, Holy Father, Lord of heaven and earth, this is Father's Day. Oh, thank you. Sending Jesus. Thank you for saving my 
rotten soul. Thank you for delivering me from demons. Thank you for helping my family. Thank you for being my heavenly father. What a wonderful day today is. It's Father's Day. Heavenly Father's Day. The Father of lights. The Father of mercies. The Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for Father's Day. Your day. Thank you, Jesus. Holy Father, Lord of heaven and earth, thank you for sending Jesus to save my stinking soul. Wash me in the blood. Forgive me of a lifetime of stinking sins. Thanks for saving me from the fires of hell. Father's Day. Father, you sent the Son. For Father so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Father, thank you for Father's Day. I, by adoption, am also a son of Father. That's amazing. I can't believe I am a son of Father. My daughter Tracy is listening to this program right now. She thought it was a great idea to celebrate Father's Day tonight. And she was right. Thank you, sweetheart. You may be seated. Happy Heavenly Father's Day to you. Thank you, Jesus. Unlike my dad, you know, I mean, he tried. Your Heavenly Father, oh, man, he will never abuse you, never forsake you never abandon you, never criticize you, never run you down, never lose patience with you, never say negative things about you, never trash you. Oh, my God. He never comes home drunk. He never misses an appointment. Can you imagine that? A father that doesn't come home drunk. That's a miracle. Fathers that actually, he does what he says he's going to do. What kind of a father is that? I didn't have one of those, but I do now. I got one now. He never, he's never late. He he never forgets. Oh, man, my dad forgot all kinds of stuff. I'm a dad. I forgot all kinds of stuff. Heavenly Father never forgets a thing, never no-shows, never screws you over, (laughs) never stabs you in the back, never abandons you, never disappoints you. (laughs) kind of a father is that? A perfect one, if you don't mind my saying. It's Father's Day. Happy Father's Day to you, Lord. Amen. Amen. (laughs) Thank you for your greatest gift, the Savior, Christ the Healer. All right, tonight's going to be a good night. Next Friday is the seminar, and I'm going to reveal some of the devil's deepest, (laughs) darkest secrets. And we're going to do the whole seminar in, with that mic sound. <laughs> Notice how it makes it more exciting and, ooh. Yeah. That's a new feature. That's software. I just bought it. We have a new website. Thank you, Nicole. I love you. And it's better than the last one, so we're going to go, I'm going to go ahead and keep this. We're still working the bugs out of it, but that's here or there. Hopefully, it will be here soon. Radio programs are on every day now, and you can catch them off the new website. Just uh, click on the Omni FM button there, and you can catch the radio programs. I set a personal record last Sunday, uh, almost 1,900 listeners. We started out at 200 and... Started out 240-something five, five weeks ago. Last week, there was a dip. It was going up, and then it dipped last week. Now, then it went up again. It's kind of like the Trump stock market. It goes... <laughs> uh, if you want to help us out, and I will hope you do, because the utility bills here are nasty during the summer. It, 
you high rollers that use Amazon, there's probably a lot of you here. If you go to Smile and then put in our name, they'll, they'll donate money to us for free. It won't cost you a penny. Same thing on Good Search, if you go there and put our name in. Thank you. Uh, tonight's teaching and Thursday night's teaching is on YouTube channel number two, House of Healing AZ. Please remember our healing lists. I love sending these out uh, because uh, most people won't do them, but there are a few people who will do them, and I get some great testimonies back. People who are looking for a quick light switch fix in life from God will not do these lists because it does require some work, and Christians by nature are <laughs> lazier in sin, particularly here in America. We got lazy Christians here. It's scary. And I see them often in my office on counseling appointments, very regularly. Sometimes I have to yell at them to try to motivate them. Sometimes yelling works. But you've got to be discreet with yelling. I have a yelling anointing. <laughs> YouTubers, don't forget about your terror cell in your church now. Get that thing going. I'm telling you, it works. I did it when I was at a mega church years ago. It was in uh, 05, I think it was, 04. It works. Thank you for your donations. Thanks for paying the electric bills this month. God love you. You can donate on the website. And I want to talk to you tonight about something interesting. 90-something percent, 80-something percent of the people that come see me for counseling are really looking for a friend because a lot of people are kind of jacked up. And when you're jacked up, traditionally, the people that like to hang around you tend to be reduced. I'm putting that very nicely. Uh... When you've got emotional and mental problems, you got spiritual problems, your personality kind of picks up deficits. And personality deficits feel uncomfortable to others. And so if your personality develops deficits and you feel uncomfortable to others, you usually have difficulty maintaining close friendships. Because, generally speaking, not all the time, most people don't want to be friends with somebody that's all screwed up. They don't feel comfortable with them. So they kind of keep them at a distance. If it's a relative, of course, you can't get rid of them, but you can, you can keep a relative kind of, you, tr you try to avoid them as much as you can. At Thanksgiving, they sit down there. You sit down here. <laughs> but what most people want when they come in for counseling really is the bottom line is they'd love to have a friend and they'd love to have a, an intimate relationship or a close relationship with the good Lord. That's really basically what they're looking for. And I don't know how many people have said to me over the years, Mike, on my prayers, I just pray and they hit the ceiling. I, I don't, God doesn't hear me anymore. I don't I hear from God anymore. They, they have this sense that there's a block up there. They can feel that. There's a blockage. And Christians don't like to have blockage like that. They feel uncomfortable with it. Most people don't want a blockage. They want, a, they want fellowship and friendship with God. Correct? This is all just common sense, isn't it? Yeah. And the Greek word for that is koinonia. Right? Let's take a quick look at it tonight. This is koinonia. Now, you see this kid here. See that baby laying on, sleeping on that dog? Those two have... A relationship. 
between each other, and they both know each other, and they're friends. They have a relationship, this dog and this baby, like you would like to have with God. You'd like to just climb on top of him and just rest, wouldn't you? I think you would. This is koinonia here. You know what it's that? See the looks on their faces. Sense, you can sense the love there. You can, can, can you feel that? Can you sense that? That's koinonia, you know. Now, this sweet potato, here's, <laughs> let me tell you something. If, if, if two sweet potatoes can have koinonia and you have the Holy Ghost, I guarantee you it is an option for you. <laughs> because how much greater are you than a sweet potato? <laughs> Think about it. This is deep. I always get deep. But the ultimate koinonia is between you and the Holy Ghost. That's really what you're looking for. It really is. And most people that come in to see me for counseling, they've got all kinds of issues and all kinds of subjects. But at the bottom end of it, the bottom line is, if I can increase their koinonia, most of their problems disappear. And many of them right in my office. Not all of them sometimes. Many of them. Just poof, they're gone. Everyone has koinonia. Did you know that? Yep. When you're born again, pew, a supernatural miracle happens. The Holy Spirit comes from heaven and bang, enters into your body. He hops into your spirit, man. At that moment, you have fellowship with God. And it's permanent. Never goes away. As soon as that happens. Bingo. Instant koinonia. Well, how come my life's so jacked up? I'll get to that in a minute. But your brain is kind of that way, too. You, got, you want this connection with God, and that's kind of how your brain works. When you're young, your brain works good, right? The neurons move from one cell to the other. And when they go from this one to that one, they jump through a what? A little bridge, a little synapse. There's a bridge between the cells. And there's a connection between you and Father's Day. See? But if that synapse starts to go bad, see, your brain works normal, and it is the greatest uh, physical miracle God ever created is the human brain. It's the most amazing thing. They've been studying it for centuries and can't figure out a fourth of it. It's so beyond anything humans know. It's really incredible. Uh, as you get older, unfortunately, uh, these synapses, what was I saying? Uh, <laughs> these synapses uh, start malfunctioning. Correct? Correct? And in addition to that, spiritually, if, if seducing spirits or mind control spirits get into a person's brain, they also can dramatically f affect these synapses in the brain, and they can start causing in the person illnesses such as these, which are very common in our society, where people have, to use a slang term, lost their minds. Correct? And... So the koinonia there in the brain doesn't work anymore. And the same way with your koinonia, if your fellowship with God, if there's a synapse break there, you can't hear from God the way you want to hear. You can't get a message from him the way you'd like to receive it, and the system starts to break down. All common sense. Genesis 2. The Lord God said it is not good for man to be alone. I will make a help meet for him. Kind of a shame to say this. But I've had several help meets over the years, uh, which I don't want to go into. That's a different, different subject. But the point is, the original divine point was, you know, you're supposed to have intimate koinonia with someone, a partner, a friend, a supporter, a, someone there, right? That was the original idea. And... This is personal koinonia. You can have per koinonia with a person, 
And as you know, animals have a form of koinonia, not a divine form, but an animalistic, natural form. These two penguins here are in love, and they're walking to the wedding and that kind of thing. <laughs> Ephesians 4 says, uh, Do not, lupeo, make the Holy Spirit sad. Because you are sealed, svargizo, you have been stamped. See? See this box of tissue? Uh, I bought this box of tissue at Dollar World. Why are you laughing, sir? <laughs> Can somebody get this guy up? Now, you see that? Svargizo, see that? That thing's been stamped because whoever made this thing wants you to know okay, that that's their company. Yep. Not Procter & Gamble or some other outfit. See that stamp? Mm -hmm. You have a stamp on you, your spirit man, so that in the spirit world, angels, demons, whoever, whatever, when they look at you, they can see into us. Spirit beings can see into humans. And they can see whether you're actually born again or not. Because you're stamped Hallelujah. with the Holy Ghost seal of ownership. Bang! When you're actually born again. Not a false convert. No, the demons see that just like that. So do the angels. Everybody sees it in the spirit world. They can fake their way through church and learn a bunch of church jargon and fool some people, but nobody fools anybody in the spirit world. Everybody sees right through you. They know exactly what you're doing. And the Holy Ghost has a personality that's different from ours. Far greater, you know. Putting it mildly, that's a massive understatement. But he is an extremely gentle person, I've found over the years. And things, he gets, he's a very sensitive person. And uh, things, he can be saddened easy. And if the Holy Ghost is saddened, their koinonia, your relationship, their, your synapse, their, that jump starts to malfunction. And then in Thessalonians, Paul said, do not, subenemy, do not quench the Holy Ghost. You know? Here in America, that's very common in church. The reason for that is Ministers and ministries and church boards, they're very control freakish. And they have a concept in their mind of what they want to accomplish in their system and how to generate revenue out of that system and how to make it a happy, productive, positive system. And so they have this concept of how church should go. And in, and in setting up that system... It's so controlled and so rigid that Paul was saying, listen, you're going to quench the moving of the Spirit if you're too tight. Okay? You ever met anybody with a tight, you know, they're just all wound up. Okay? The Holy Ghost doesn't like that. He likes to have freedom and he likes some relaxed atmosphere where he can do whatever the heck he wants to do and not have to ask me about it. So when I opened up the House of Healing years ago and then went over here, I saw that system from year, years of being in churches and watching how they do things and analyzing their system. And so when I started that system and this system, I went the opposite of church. I saw what the church was doing, and I did the opposite. Everything was opposite, literally. Uh, 
I actually made a checklist years ago. Literally, I wrote, wrote it out. And I would spend time at Burger King studying it. Choir. And I'd have my list. No choir. Singing. No singing. Pass a plate. No pass a plate. Quiet altar calls. No altar calls. And I went down the list, and everything they did at church, I did the opposite. Why? Because I saw that system set up controlling it. I saw it. Psst. Oh, Mike's an apostate. Oh, time to send him an email. Uh, no, Jack. What I was trying to do was the right thing. Not the wrong thing like everybody else does. What an odd novelty. Ha! I'll be signing autographs for years. When you see a system set up and you look at the net result of it in any field, athletics, business, pol politics, whatever it is, and you see the fruit of it not working, somebody who has half a brain, and again, that's a small percent, would say to themselves, as they say in Hong Kong, something wrong. There's something wrong with that system. And therefore, if something's wrong with the system, anybody with a half a brain, again, it's a small percent, would say a modification is required. I'll be out in the hall signing autographs tonight. Oh, wow, I'm killing it. So ben me means to, it would be like if you had a match, and you quenched it. So I set up a different system. I just said, hey, we're going to just, you sit there, we'll do God's word, and we'll cut the Holy Ghost loose. Now, obviously, that system's not really catching on too good, but I still believe it's the better system. I still believe it, even though it doesn't look like it is, Because at altar call time, that's when the rubber hits the road. Mm -hmm. right. And for years, I've had the honor and privilege of seeing the Holy Ghost move in every service. I can't even think of a service he wasn't manifesting somewhere. But I did that by having limited restrictions on him. Limited procedures, limits, limited policies, patience. All right, let's skip this section. Let's go to Titus then. All right. To the pure, all things are pure, but to those who are, may I know, contaminated or, or stained, uh, what does me I know mean? As I've gotten older, it's really weird. Uh, and I don't know why this is, but I'm sloppier than I used to be. Sloppier when I was young. I don't know why. Yeah, I hate to reveal this because obviously I look great. Yeah. But... I like to sit in an easy chair with my feet up while I'm watching the news. And I like to eat <laughs> while I'm watching. And I end up every time now, and sometimes I think about it, I said, tonight, Mike, you're all prayed up. You've got the anointing. You're not going to slop any food on your shirt. <laughs> and to my utter amazement, Sure enough, boop, there it goes. Something drops. It's weird. But spiritually, you can stain your soul. Like I do my shirts every night.
How do you do that? Well, let's find out. When you stain your soul and you are defiled or you're stained and it causes unbelief and doubt to set in, Paul said. And people that are defiled see things through a prism of impurity. And when you let all kinds of ugly things into your mind and you sear your conscience, your koinonia thing, your synapses start to break. And the person starts to wonder, my goodness, I don't, my relationship, my anointing, my sense of God, my feeling, I don't feel him anymore. Well, Paul said, listen, it's, it comes from getting stained through sin. And it's easy for Christians to do. And church people are very commonly stained and have seared consciences. It's very, very common for somebody who goes to church to have that. It happens all the time. But they either don't know it or they know it and they're covering it up and they will talk a good game. Homologia means uh, you got all that God speak down. Hallelujah. God bless you, brother. You get the religious crap. And Paul said, these people that have got their God speak down, they, they talk a good God game, but if you follow them around, you're going to go, wait a minute. Back to Hong Kong. Some say, well, And what it is, it's that stain. Those stains, I drop it on my shirt. I take a sip. This really drives me nuts. As I've gotten older, I can't remember that I've got ice in something. I mean, it's weird. I picked the darn glass up. I forgot the ice was in there, right? I go like that. And nothing moves, and then suddenly all the ice comes out and hits me in the face and goes down the front. I'm not making it up. It's like a miracle. I pick the glass up. You'd think it would just come right out, right? No, no big deal. But it, nothing comes out, and then suddenly the... Well, you can fool around with sin a little bit and say some things and do something, you better watch out because suddenly the stain comes right and there, there it is again. I got caught. Ooh. But I'm not going to let anybody know that, so I'm going to talk up my God speak. How you doing, sister? God bless you. You look anointed. And you vomit this crap on them, and they don't know it's vomit. It sounds like the God speak they use. See, they're as sick as you are. And Paul says these people are abominable, and they are disobedient. Apethos, what's that? Have you ever met anybody like that? I know you have particularly your relatives, you explain something over and over to them. Like five and six times you talk to them. And they still don't get it. And then your patience starts to wear on you. Aha, uh -huh. you ever felt that one? That's the kind of person talk, Paul's talking about. Epithes, right there. People who you talk to over and over again, they don't receive it, they don't listen. But while you're talking to them, oh, yeah, you're right, Mike. And they turn right around, hello, and do the exact opposite. Taking a drink. Why isn't this working? There's the eye. It suddenly comes out. I don't know how that can be. I've never understood it. They are reprobates. Wow, that's amazing. What's a reprobate? 
a docomus, if somebody who thinks so anti-Christ-like that God says, hey, I can't use your mind. I can't even use it. Out. A reprobate. Sabinami means do not quench the spirit. That means put the fire out. See? Do not grieve the Holy Ghost. Do not make him sad. Well, God can't get sad. Hey, when you hurt somebody or when you hurt yourself, he is sad over it. Why? Because he loves you so much, you hurt him. Hurting the Holy Ghost is a bad habit if you're looking for a miracle from God. That's going to block some of your healings, your deliverances, and your miracles. In fact, that's a perfect formula for ruining your life, making him sad. He's the one person in life you really need to make happy. If you had to pick anybody in the world, you'd pick him. I hope. For, uh, Corinthians 13, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, Paul said, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God, agape, unconditional love, charis, undeserved, unmerited favor, Agape, unconditional love of God, and the koinonia, fellowship, be with you all. Translation, that's God's will for your life. What does God want for my life? I, he just told you. He wants you to have unconditional love. He wants you to have unmerited, unearned favor, grace given to you that you didn't earn by doing a cotton-picking thing. And he wants you to have a relationship with the Holy Ghost and not make him sad. First Corinthians 1, Paul said, God is faithful by whom you were called to the, there it is again, fellowship of his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. God has called you to have koinonia. He called you for that. All he's saying is, listen, don't make him sad. If he wants to do something, don't quench him. Don't tell him he can't do it. It happens all the time in church. I saw it with my own eyes numerous times. We don't do deliverance here. Uh, no, we don't believe in healing. All kinds of weird quenchings of the spirit all over America. Churches are jacked completely up in this country. Why? Because their main focus is satanic quenching of the moving of the spirit. God's grace and unconditional love, he wants to dump it everywhere, but the churches block it. That's why there's so many people go to the streets to minister. That's why there's so many home groups break opening up now. People are going to home groups. People are going out in the street. Why? This structure, this church structure, quenches the moving of the Spirit, and that makes him sad. If he doesn't get a chance to heal somebody, that bothers him. He doesn't like that. So what I tried to do here, set up a system where I'm open to whatever he's in the mood for. What's going to happen? I never know what's going to happen when I come here. 
That's not my job to know. See, I don't want to put that structure. This isn't a mic control issue. I'm flowing with what I'm seeing. What Philippines 2, if there is any consolation in Christ, any comfort of love, or he mentions it again right here, fellowship, koinonia of the Holy Ghost, if there be any bowels and mercies, he says, fulfill my joy and be like-minded. Phroneo means to focus. Like you're taking a test. It's not in the Greek word nama where you're thinking about something. No, it's for nail. You're collecting your thoughts on something. Mm -hmm. See? Like a math test. So he's saying, hey, focus on bowels of mercy. Focus on not quenching the spirit. Focus on not making him sad. Focus on unconditional love. Focus on grace. Unmerited, undeserved favor from God. Charis. That I can use. Because if I have to earn it, I'm in deep trouble. You know why? I'm a genetic failure. I know you're stunned. I see the look on your face. You can't believe I said that. I am a genetic failure. If left up to me, I guarantee you I would end up in hell. I guarantee it. I'm a screw up. I was born a screw up. That's right. My mother was in labor three days. Poor thing. I mean, she is in pain. You know what I was doing in there? I had hands on both fallopian tubes. I thought, I'm not coming out. I know what's out there. I saw the multiple marriages. I saw hell. I saw the money gone. I saw losing my stuff every five years. I saw it. I'm holding on to the tubes. My mother's pushing, hug! He won't come out. I was a screw up in the womb. Thank you. I need grace, honey. I can't survive without it, period. I have no abilities or skills whatsoever. There's what I want to hear. Unconditional favor. That's right. See? I even scare babies. That's how screwed up I am. I need mercy from God. That's all I can take. I can't work and get better. Every time I work, I get worse. I need unconditional love. Nobody's going to love me conditionally. Don't answer phone numbers. But they're out there. Come on. It says here, Check this out. Fulfill my joy and focus on these things. For a nail, focus. Having the same love. Being of one accord and of one mind. Having there means not to have something like I do this. See that tissue? I have it in my hand. No. It means to echo. Hold it and possess it. Like it's important to hold. He's saying, hold it and possess it. The same love. And uh, be of one accord. Huh, that's unbelievable. Sumsikos. What does that mean? Unity of your souls. Unity of souls. We don't have that in America. We have racism. Oh, boy, whites don't like blacks. Blacks don't like whites. That's all satanic. There's no, there is no black and white people in heaven. There's no yellow people. There's no Indian. That's, that's all lies. 
People, there's no difference between one person and another one. There's no Asians in heaven. They're, they're not there. Your spirit has no race. If your spirit walked out of your body right now and just stood over there, I'd run like crazy, but let's say, say if it happened. <laughs> you could not tell what race that woman is. She looks like African-American to me, but you never know anymore. So I'm guessing she's black. If she walked out of her body and stood right there, you could not tell what race that woman was. And in heaven, after the rapture, you, no one will care. Who cares? God doesn't see people's races. He sees their souls. He wants their hearts. That's where the key, that's the key. Being of one mind, same Greek word, focus. Focus on it. That requires effort. Uh huh. That's what my mother said to me. In fact, my wife said it to me tonight. Did you hear me? Uh huh. Right? Froneo. My wife said that to me driving down here. She was telling me a story about my wife's getting a dog. Okay? And I can't follow this process, it's too much for me. She's got this thing all worked out. Scientifically, she's been doing research on it. She's in my office right now, right? Yeah, the door shut. She's been researching getting this dog, special dog. Uh, to me, dogs are dogs. But to people that know about dogs, apparently dogs are not dogs. Dogs are, <laughs> there's different dogs. Oh, she's got this thing all worked out. She's telling me about this dog she's getting. She has to go to Nevada to get it. I said, Aren't there dogs here in Arizona? Why, why do you got to? I don't understand anything about it. Eh? Husband material. Husband material. Dummy. Husband's a dummy. She said, are, are you listening to me? And I said, oh, absolutely. I, sometimes you got to lie. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I heard that. Yeah, dog in Nevada. What was she really saying to me in Greek? Fernail, are you focused on my dog story? Is what she was saying. And that's what Paul's saying. Focus on not quenching the spirit. Focus on not making him sad. Focus on unconditional love. Focus on grace. Focus on the stains you've been picking up by compromising your faith. Hanging around people you shouldn't hang around. Watching stuff you shouldn't watch. Saying things you shouldn't say. You're staining your conscience, Paul said. And to those who, people who have stains, nothing else is pure. If you have stains on your conscience, that's going to block your koinonia, and that's exactly the opposite of what you're looking for. What you want is a relationship between God. Fellowship is what you're looking for. You want to sense him, you want to feel him, you want to know. When people come out of other religions and they get filled with the Holy Ghost, they're amazed. They're just amazed. They can't believe it. I've said this a dozen times, times a hundred over the years. While I'm interviewing somebody, I ask them about when they first became a Christian, and they tell me, well, I joined the church here, and I got baptized here. And then the next question I ask them is, have you ever had any personal experience with the Holy Spirit? And then the next thing they say to me is, well, yeah, uh, I was walking down the street one day, and a girder fell off a building and landed right there. God saved me. I said, no, no, no. No, 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 no. Anybody could explain that away. I said, do you have any personal relationship with the Holy Spirit? Personal. Well, what do you mean? Well, now I know this person is not probably even born again. Correct? Because if you don't have the Holy Ghost, you're not born again by definition. 
Romans 8. And so, when these people sense the Holy Spirit in a counseling session for the first time in their lives, they're utterly amazed. And if somebody comes out of a legalistic type religion, Seventh-day Adventist, Mormonism, Catholicism, the different religions where you are required to perform to please God, that quenches the moving of the Spirit. Because he moves by love and grace. And when you think you have to perform to please him, that makes him sad. Here's the performance he really likes. I love you. I love you. I showed you what he really likes before the service started. I celebrated Heavenly Father's Day. That's what he really likes. That's not performing. That's love. Loving comes from here. See? If you have to perform all the time to show love, that's more like manipulation. Yeah, I was a counseling a couple about their sex life not long ago. I do that often. Any kids here? That's good. And she was complaining to me about their sex life. And... Uh, I said, well, I get a lot of complaints about that. Pretty common issue. Well, he's only nice to me when he wants some. Well, that's a door opener for me. That's very revealing. So there's, there's reasons for that. But that, is that love? Well, she's not sensing it, see? She's sensing being used. She's not sensing love. As you would if someone's only nice to you when they want something, like your kids. Hi, Mom. Can Oh, what do you want? <laughs> See, once they've repetitively done it over time, you can spot it like that, and then you just cut to the chase. What do you want? There's got to be some humans here tonight. Wow. See, all these people are focused, and they're all of one soul. They're at a football game. Your soul is where your emotions come out of, see? And they're cheering for their team, and they're all of one soul in that section. That's where the fans of a certain team, they all sit in their sections. If they mix up, mix them up, and they start serving beer, then you're looking at some fights. <laughs> so they like to keep this team and that team separate, and then they like to serve beer. Lots of it. And beer is better to drink than stuff with ice in it. You put ice in it, nothing comes out, and then suddenly it all comes out. Beer is not like that. It flows normally or without ice. Anything without ice is good to drink. Drives you nuts. These guys are all in one accord, and that's what God looks for, where two or three are gathered together in my name. There am I in the midst. What's he looking for there? They're all in one soul accord. It works. I had a staff meeting sometimes. I need to have more of them. But. And I just explain how we do things around here, and I keep it short and sweet. And Here's the idea. We want to see everyone helped. We want to do or say anything we have to do to get them to take one more step closer to the Holy Ghost. That's the, that's the goal. It's not, it's not a star system. It's not a, wow, look at me. It's what have I got to say or do to that person to get them to take another step closer. Amen. See? And if I can get all the 
people on my team in one accord on that subject there, then we see more people healed and delivered. Amen. That's right. And we've been having a rash of deliverances and healings lately. The children's deliverance are booming. Our healing room last Saturday, booming around here. Booming with healings. Why? We don't want to quench the spirit, and we don't want to make him sad, so we roll out the carpet with grace, with love, with bowels of mercy. See? Those things make him happy. Those are not the things that make him sad. So therefore, as I'm for nail, focusing on it, what do I got to do to make the Holy Ghost happy here? Because when he's happy, he shows up. Then you know what he does? He takes the devil by the nap of the neck here, gives him the knee deal, slams him over there, picks him up over there, bashes him over there. I don't even think he knows he's doing it. He's so great. But the demons know he's doing it. They scream sometimes here. Holy crap, I'm getting kicked out. Yeah, here, take that. <laughs> the men know what I'm doing. Listen, uh, 1 John 1, God is light and in, in him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him, but we're walking in darkness, we are lying and we do not a good translation there. Poieo, practice should have been the word. Practice is a repetitive behavior. A do could be a single thing. Okay? Every Christian does something wrong. Oh, okay. Yeah, I got a lot of pious folks here tonight. <laughs> yeah, we'll skip the seminar next week. See, practicing something is different from doing it once or twice, correct? Every Christian sins, fails. Every Christian does that, but not every Christian practices it. See the difference here in this text? He's talking about practicing it. That's a repetitive behavioral system that is demonic. And he's saying that person's a liar and they're deceived. Okay? You're deceived. You're yelling at your spouse. Bah! Well, everybody yells at their spouse in life. That's why they're called spouses. <laughs> but practicing yelling at them, wait a minute here. Now there's a serious problem there. Now we've got root issues that need to be looked at here. That's, I'd say, practice of demonic behavior, yelling at the spouse, okay? Everybody loses their temper and gets mad once in a while. Not everybody constantly gets mad when they're offended or hurt or scared. That's a deep-rooted issue. Now we've got demonic problems. Somebody's practicing anger issues. Red flag, now we got problems. See the difference? Everybody does things that are wrong. Not everybody repetitively, regularly practices them, is what Paul is saying. Walking in darkness. Everybody's in darkness once in a great while, right? I mean, nobody knows everything. Nobody does everything perfect. Of course, that's why you got grace, for crying out loud. Grace covers it, okay? But grace doesn't cover repetitive, deliberate practicing of sin. Then the law of sowing and reaping kicks in, and the demons come for you, and then you get your face kicked in. You lose your health, you lose your money, curses fall on you, divorce, there goes the house, there goes your life. Your existence now sucks. Why? Because you were practicing, poieo, you were practicing sinning. And by practicing sinning, you're asking the devil to come right at you. You're waving a red flag at a bull.
going on there. Professing Christians, Paul was talking about earlier, people who talk a good game actually live in darkness and some of them don't even know it. That's called a delusion. How do you know you're living in a delusion? Easy to spot. You ready? If you've got long-term issues, long-term issues, that won't clear up. You're living in a delusion. If you sin or fail here and there, no, that's not a delusion. Everybody does that. Yeah. See this guy right there? He don't even know he's living there. He needs you to help him. If we walk in the light as he is in the life, we have koinonia with who? Each other, where two or three are gathered, and see, the synapses are working. You don't have spiritual Alzheimer's. Christians who have spiritual Alzheimer's have jacked up lives. Their finances are terrible. Their health is terrible. Their friends are terrible. Their family problems, their emotional problems. They've got spiritual Alzheimer's. The synapses in their spirit are not working. They're not getting over the gap. The bridge collapsed. So what happens? The Christians get sick. They have dysfunctional relationships. They get divorced. They lose their money, they develop bad habits, and on and on it goes. Chronic failure. And then the demons come along and say, hey, this Jesus stuff doesn't work, does it? And they get the Christians start to get a little steamed at God. How come I'm not healed? Where's the money? Well, huh? What about prosperity? Kenneth Copeland told me I, I was getting a yacht. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? Okay. What happened was what I've just gone over, the synapses, the spirit's been quenched. The Holy Ghost is sad over something you did, something you said. You repetitively practiced it. Spirit-led Christians go to the light. Why? Jesus said it. Hey, listen, people that are practicing secret sins, they don't want to go to the light because it'll get exposed. You have no idea how many people have set up a counseling appointment to come and see me over the years and didn't show up. You wouldn't believe it. I've had a rack of no-shows over the years. You know why? Talk to them later. They got scared. Some of them make up excuses, but a lot of them don't have very high IQs, so you can spot it pretty easy. Brother Mike, I, I couldn't make it. My God, I saw a Martian. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. You know, they'll, they'll, they'll say something to reveal that you're running about 98. Of, kind of, I can spot them. Because this is obviously huge. Yeah. <laughs> Ephesians 5, have no... Fellowship with what? God. Works of darkness. But rather, elenco, convict them. Now that's an important distinction there. See? <clears throat> Conviction comes from the Holy Ghost. If you do something wrong, see, and I reprove you, you know, that's like, what are you doing? Oh, stop screwing up. Well, that's not convicting somebody. That's offending them. Hello? Let me talk to the husbands and wives. They know what I'm talking about. You said you'd do it this way. Okay, you're not. You're re No. That's not giving the Holy Ghost a chance to convict the person for what they did. 
if you reprove them, they'll probably dig in like an Alabama tick and rebel or fight back. Well, wait a minute. What? You didn't do this and that yesterday. Oh, now you've got a, a shooting match going. That always leads nowhere but bad stuff. Paul's saying, look, you've got to... Use grace, mercy, bowels of mercy, compassion, and show them and explain to them. And if you'll do it that way, the Holy Spirit will convict the person for what they did or said or didn't do or didn't say, whatever. See the difference? Reprove is not a good word now in the King James there. Galatians 5 and 1 Corinthians 5. A little leaven leavens the whole lump. What's, what's Paul telling us here? Man, if you let a little sin in your life, your koinonia, the synapse, is going to get blocked. Paul said he wanted the grace of Jesus Christ and the love of God on you, right? Well, you already have that, but that isn't good enough. What? That's heresy. No. You want a relationship with God. You've already got God's love, okay? You should already be dead, half of you here, okay? You already got God's grace. You have that. That isn't good enough. What Father wants is a relationship, koinonia, the fellowship of the Holy Ghost. He wants all three for you, not two, because two is not good enough. A hardened sinner has the first two, correct? A hardened sinner is offered grace from God. And they're already loved by God. That's what it says in Romans. In fact, they were loved before we were loved before we became Christians, it says. But that isn't good enough. Is it? You want a relationship with God. That's the third prong in Corinthians that Paul put. It's the last verse in 2 Corinthians. It's, it's a textbook classic. And he was just signing off. That's how anointed he was. He dropped that bomb right there at the end. It was incredible. Love, grace, not good enough. Koinonia, fellowship. Now it all comes together. But if you're practicing things that causes quenching and sadness in the spirit and so your life then suffers the devil takes pot shots at you he tax your health he ruins your finances he he breaks your relationship he causes all kind of mental and emotional stress i get prayer requests all the time off the emails all the time Brother might pray for my business that's collapsing. Wow. That's a hard prayer to pray because there's a reason that business is collapsing. What do we need here? A deep revelation. It's usually one of these things. A little leaven leavens the whole lump. Translation, you let one rotten person into your life. And spiritually, you can take a dive you wouldn't believe. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. You get drunk one night and sleep with somebody you shouldn't have slept with, you can pick up a transfer spirit. A little leaven you let in can eventually leaven the whole lump. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've heard it a thousand times. They got pregnant. So I wanted to give, the, give my child a father. So we got married. You ever heard that one? I heard it a million times. A little leaven, a little mistake, one sin, one bad person, one bad habit, whatever it is, can eventually leaven the whole lump. Every summer when I was a kid, 
I lived with my granddad. He lived on the lake. And we had built a makeshift beach on his property. It was torture. I was in sixth grade, I guess. Sixth graders don't like to do any real work. They don't like work. Work is a four-letter word to them. It's similar to a five-letter word, Ebola. And I had to rake this whole section of beach out from that chair clear over there, you know, like that. And that took me <clears throat> half the summer. And we had to get the trees, the rocks, the everything. I went, you know, out, I don't know how long it was. It seemed like it was an ocean's depth, but it must have been 25 feet or something. Anyway, I cleared all that out so we could have a beach. And then he put up rope, and he pounded in these stakes and different things. So that was our beach. But I went out there one summer. And I noticed some algae over here. And I didn't think anything of it. And then I came back a couple days later, and it, had, it was a little bigger, like that. And it was moss. It was weird. It was like the Invasion of the Body Snatcher movie. You ever see that? Yeah. This moss, <laughs> I'm not even joking, started creeping across the lake. It was freaky, but it started out. See, if you let a little, a little, just a little bitterness, just a little pissed off, just a little frustrated with her, just a little tired of him, if you let a little leaven in, you're going to end up, you, not them, with a broken relationship, koinonia. The synapses aren't going over the bridge. First Corinthians 6, you get involved with somebody who's not on your page spiritually, or in business, or in politics, or in religion, you know what you're going to get? <laughs> Hellfire. Uh huh. It's tough. You marry somebody because you're lonely and you are getting older now or your biological clock's running or whatever reason and you marry that person, you are going to live to regret it. Why? Because you are not to be unequally yoked with unbelievers. There are Christian unbelievers. This religion believes that, but they don't believe that. This religion believes that, but they don't believe that. If you marry this person, if you have a business partnership with that person, and their philosophy, their attitude about money, whatever it is, is different than yours. You're in trouble. And the Bible says, don't do it. I remember years ago, this was back in the 70s, I was in college, and I saw this movie called Carnal Knowledge. Probably never even heard of it. But it was this movie about these two college guys, and it was all about them finding, finding love. 
and about all these different relationships they both went through over the years. And they stayed buddies from freshman year to when they were older, businessmen. One became a doctor, the other guy became a rich businessman. Jack Nicholson was in the movie. And I didn't think much about that movie except for the fact I was, I was watching one of the women in the movie. Her name was Ann Margaret. And this woman was so gorgeous, I could barely look at her. I mean, she was drop-dead gorgeous. You never see anything like it. To this day, there's nobody like her. Now. But this guy in the movie, Nicholson, he was so shallow a person. And his idea of marriage was what they looked like. And he was constantly uh, valuing women based on how they looked. And at the end of the movie, he had... He was mentally ill, he was bipolar, he had ED. The guy was, you know, it was a, kind of a sad movie, actually. But it showed you how these people went through this process of being shallow, and he was constantly marrying people that he was unequally yoked with in this movie. They had nothing but misery. Every relationship blew up. He was alone at the end. Nobody saw that movie? But anyway, it came out in the 70s. probably never heard of it. But what it's talking about is this verse. They didn't even know it. Once you pair up with somebody who's not like you spiritually or sexually or financially or emotionally, you're asking for a visit from the devil. And he will use those differences to wreck you Spiritually. What? Uh-oh. Instead of fellowship, notice King James translated as what word? Communion. communion. Same Greek word. What you're looking for is the communion, the fellowship of the Holy Ghost. Because, Paul said, light and darkness have no fellowship. See? That light bulb right there, if you go right up and stick your face right in it, there's no darkness in there. I just looked at that light, now I can't see anything, but I'm assuming you're still there because I hear you. But anyway, what it is is this. If you let a little leaven of darkness into your mind, into your soul, that thing, like moss on my lake, Lake Thorndale in Kansas, it starts growing. And that stuff grew out so far, Grandpa told me it needed to be cleaned up. Yeah. I said, well, who in God's name is going to come out here and clean it up? And it was, a, it was like supernatural. I was only in sixth grade. My granddad was like this mythical creature a rake appeared in his hands. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. And supernaturally, he was right, right in my face. The Holy Ghost is going to tell you, listen, I'm going to have to give you a rake. I'm not going to rake it out for you. I'll help you rake it out. But you're going to get the rake like Brother Mike did when he was a kid from Grandpa. As soon as you let in somebody you shouldn't be with, somebody you shouldn't be working with, somebody you just shouldn't open a business with, oh, my God, business partners, they, businesses fall apart all the time. I mean, it's, it happens all the time. It's just like another thing. Why? People are not on the same page. They don't have the same philosophy with finances. Yeah, I had a friend of mine years ago, when I was working as a secular counselor, one of my clients was a law, small law firm. There was two lawyers in it. And they did a lot of work, and I got a lot of business from them. Tens of thousands of dollars. But one of the lawyers 
was loose with the money. And the other guy was tight. He was conservative. And the, the other lawyer that was loose was always coming in every year, two, three times a year, saying, hey, we need to increase our draw for our salary because he's always blowing money at, with his family at home, whatever. He loved to buy everything. He liked to buy stuff on the Internet. He liked to buy stuff, mail order. But the other lawyer didn't like that. He was, you know, well, wait a minute. Well, eventually, guess what happened? Right. Yes, sir. They split. They both went solo. This guy who was conservative, did much better than the money blower. I ended up with the money blower as my client. Uh-huh. What happened to my bills? They eventually got paid. But it was slow. What am I trying to talk about? What am I saying here? Listen, don't get involved with somebody who can do you absolutely no good. Watch yourself or you will rue the day. How will I rue it, Brother Mike? Laying in bed, flat on your back, staring at the ceiling. Remember that? You got that holy shoot look on your face. Oh. And you look over at the clock, and now it's 1 o'clock in the morning. Nobody's listening to me. You should be listening to me. Don't do it. Let it go. A little sin, just a little look. Oh, here's a little porn. There's no such thing as a little porn. There's a spirit behind it. That thing will drop on you like you can't believe. Don't get mad at me. I'm just reading it. <laughs> what concord? Symphonesis. What's that mean? That's where we get our English word. Symphony. Yes. Symphony. Okay. I would have made a good conductor. <laughs> I got that nice movement. See that? Yes. That's, that took years to develop. You don't just get that. Well, what's Paul saying here? Belial and Christ are polar opposites. And he's telling you, if you want that fellowship, that koinonia with the Holy Ghost, you're going to be a polar opposite. I have to be sinless? Of course not. Nobody's sinless. Everybody fails. Everybody sins. But are you practicing it on a regular basis is what Paul's saying to you. If you're practicing it, back to Hong Kong, something wrong. <laughs> there it is. It's unity. See, they're all playing together. See? I know it doesn't look like it, but this band has some form of unity. <laughs> Right? Yeah. So looks can be deceiving. So you must use your discernment when opening a business, when getting involved with someone, when puttering around with sin, when taking an offense from somebody. A little offense, believe it or not, can mushroom into something nasty. It happens all the time. First Corinthians 6. What part has he that believes with an apostos. What's that? An unbeliever. If you get divorced as a born-again Christian, the Bible says you are not allowed to remarry someone who's not saved. 1 Corinthians 7. Correct? Mm -hmm. Why? A little leaven leavens the whole lump. See? If you ever hear somebody say, well, I'm going to go ahead and marry him because I can lead him to the Lord. <laughs> Get out the night train. It's, that is a textbook divorce in the making. That is not going to happen. Why? A little leaven leavens the lump. 
the Christian who marries the sinner sinks to the sinner. What agreement? Soon catathesis. What does that mean? We agree. Let's do it this way. How should we proceed? Well, I think we ought to do this and that, not do that. You know, that sounds good. Deal. What mental agreement does what? The temple of God have with idols. You wouldn't believe how many people have come to me over the years who came back from the Holy Land. I don't want to offend anybody, but the Holy Land is actually demon land. That is not the Holy Land over there. There's more demons over there than you can count. They've got everything over there. Orthodox, Catholic, Muslims, Jews, Christians. It's a melting pot of insanity over there. Oh, but it's the Holy Land. Abraham was there, and John baptized everybody in the Jordan. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. That happened then, see. But the temple of God is not on the temple mount anymore. You are the temple of the living God. It's not over in Jerusalem. That's a false doctrine. They come back to see see me in counseling sessions picking up demons on trips to Jerusalem. In fact, it's so common in secular counseling, they call it the Jerusalem syndrome. And they're not even saved. It's a mental illness people pick up from religious ideation when they go over to the Middle East. Look it up. It's called the Jerusalem syndrome. It's, that has nothing to do with Christianity. That's a secular illness. I'm not even making that up. A little leaven leavens the whole lump. So you get these carnal, lukewarm Christians running around Jerusalem. Hallelujah, this is great. Jesus walked over here. He walked over there. And he walked into this Arab gift shop. And there they go. And they think, oh, I'm fine. I'm washing the blood. I'm covered. I'm covered. I can go wherever I want. Oh, they walk into a mosque. Oh, let's look around. You're not covered. Trust me. Hello? You're going to pick up a transfer. Fool. Hey, it's so common, secular counselors get them in their office. Nightmares, bad dreams, weird sicknesses. Everybody in their demonized dog has been in those hotels over there before you got there. Oh, I'm going over to the Benny Hinn group. <laughs> we're, staring, we're staring at this hotel. You know who's been in that hotel before Benny Hinn's group got there? You know you don't. You have no idea who's been in that hotel. You have no idea what they've been doing in there. By the way, that area of the world draws religious kooks. Uh-huh. It draws them there. Everybody wants to go there, except me. I'm going to stay over here where it's safe. But listen, the temple of God has nothing to do with idols. It's a polar opposite. I'm not going to go into the Muslim shop. How much are these Mohammed statues? Are they... Okay. I'm not interested in a mosque statue. Okay. I... Stupid. Stay out of the... Oh, boy, a little... Level. Come out from among them. Okay, I worded it differently. I apologize. I said, stay out of it. <laughs> Yahweh said, be separate. Hey, what's he saying there? Everybody fails and everybody sins. Grace covers that. Practicing something is not covered by grace and opens the door to a satanic attack. Hey, Christians get DUIs just like sinners. 
It happens all the time. I'm not even making it up. Be separate. Afrizo, what's that mean? Hey, I can go to here, but I can't go there. I can't go there. Set boundaries. You got to do it. I do marriage counseling. If you have two people come in for marriage counseling, <clears throat> one of the spouses is usually the dominant one. And the dominant one usually has more things going their way than the other one. So, if you have a relationship where this one's dominating that one, that marriage is going to end up in divorce. Right? Sometimes the spouse being dominated is willfully being dominated by some delusion in their mind. Okay? For example, in Christians, many times it's the wife, and they say, well, I have to submit to my husband. Okay? You know, submission is, in Greek, means to subordinate. It doesn't mean to become a slave. I didn't hear one amen on that. There's some sad wives here. Hey, listen, you've got to sit down with your husband and say, Honey, look, I'm, I'm, you're the boss, and I understand that, but I'm going to set some boundaries here. Okay, I'm not going to do everything you tell me every time you tell me to do it. That's not a marriage. That's slavery. Hello? <laughs> uh, it's time. I'm going to get in the emails now. You've got to learn to set boundaries in a relationship. See? Here's a frequent one. Uh, he wants sex twice a day. How long have you been married? 20 years. Oh, boy. What's that telling me? The guy's probably got lust demons. Sex, twi twice a day sex for 20 years is not normal. It's inhuman. Can you imagine the emails I'm going to be getting? <laughs> I'm, I'm dead in the water now. It's over. A lot of donors just left me too. So now that's telling me something. When I get that information, now I've got a series of issues I just learned. And his attitude is, I'm the dominant. You're to submit to your husband. No, that's, that's almost like whoredom. Nobody can keep that pace up. See, so you've got to negotiate a deal. And sometimes it's great to go to counseling. That's what the purpose of it is. The counselor kind of sits in the middle if they're any good. They hear both sides objectively without taking sides. And you negotiate a deal. Now, wait a minute. You want sex twice a day. She's worn out, exhausted. She works. She comes home and clean. And you go through the routine and you show how it works. And, when you, and people are looking at you and going, well, I didn't look at it that way. I didn't think of it. That. That's, your per that's the point of a counselor. You outline issues other people are not considering. You kind of get them to look at it in a different angle instead of looking at it the way they look at it. <laughs> look at it this way. How about if we look at it that way? That's my job. So you got to negotiate a deal. Sometimes these people are so jacked up, out of mercy, I'll do it for them. I'll say, and listen. Why don't we do this? You get, you get sex on these days. Okay, you'd agree to leave her alone on these days. See, when you've got the big brain, it's unlimited out there. Listen, you've got to be separate. You've got to, listen, Satan's over here. He's not coming in here, and I'm not going out there. 
That's what Paul's saying. You got to set boundaries in the spirit world. If you don't, you're going to regret it. That's a boundary. Okay? It's like a fence in your spirit life. Okay, I'll watch this stuff here, but I'm not going to watch that. Okay? I'll go here, but I'm not going to go in there, so to speak. You set a boundary in your mind. Okay, I'll dwell on these thoughts, but I'm not going to dwell on those thoughts. I'm going to take those thoughts captive. I'm going to get rid of them now. You've got to set boundaries if you want to survive. If you don't, the devil's going to overrun your boundaries. He, that's what he does, and he'll do it every single time. I went to a, a woman's rehab uh, center one time. This was in... Uh, 2006, I think it was. And uh, we were praying for some of the people there, and this gal came up from uh, CFTN. And uh, she wanted prayer for this and that and this and that. And for some reason, something popped, just a thought popped in my mind. Well, I'm going to pray for this gal's weight, because she... She was pretty fat. And I knew it was emotional issues. So I was praying for those issues first, and then I, then I, she repented, and so I asked God, I don't know where this thought came from, it just popped in my head. I said, Lord, I want you to heal this woman's fat. I, I just made it up. I'd never done it before. It just popped in my head. We left the gal, and I went over here to pray with a couple other people, and then the woman, she, go, she goes, ah! And everybody looks over there, and she's pulling her pants up. Well, my jaw hit the floor. She lost like 30 pounds in seconds and was pulling her pants up. Big baggy here, big baggy here. This thing was loose as a goose. And... I said to her afterwards, I said, now, that's a great miracle from God. And I said, I'm going to be honest with you, I've never seen that before. I said, I've never seen, that's never happened to me before. So I was amazed. But I said to her, I think the cautionary tale here is you now have to watch what you eat. You've got to watch your exercise. I think that was an act of mercy by God to give you a jump start on your new Christian life. You know. And I'm, I'm just flying off the cuff here. I have never counseled a miracle fat healing before. I don't really know what I'm doing. But I'm, think, I'm just thinking, hey, this might be God helping her, giving her a, a start at a new life, right? right. <clears throat> a month later, she calls the office, wants to come in for prayer, and gained all the weight back plus 10 pounds. A little leaven or pizza, whatever it is. <laughs> See, sometimes the devil just comes in. Just take one bite. Just take another. See? Right? See, the, the devil thinks ahead. Christians don't. They just react to stuff. you got to set boundaries, it says here. See, what's Paul saying there? Hey, come out from among them and be separate. Listen, you're a born-again Christian. You are not a sinner, and you do not live like that anymore. Hello? You're a new creation in Christ. You don't do that anymore. You don't live there anymore. You don't say that. You don't act that. You don't, you've changed. This thing on? 1 Corinthians 10 10 says, the things which the Gentiles sacrifice to, they sacrifice to daimonian demons, not to God. And I would not, you should have Fellowship. Koinonia, 
communion with demons, for crying out loud. Why? Because you cannot drink out of the cup of the Lord and then go. You cannot be a partner or a sharer of the Lord's table and then go sit on the table of. No, you cannot go hallelujah and worship God and then go home and cuss your family out. Hello. You can't do it because a little leaven will eventually leaven the whole lump. Okay? Here's what you don't understand. Fighting, strife, and arguing later on translates into sicknesses, illnesses, and death. The body absorbs the strife, the spirits, the anger, the bitterness, the root of bitterness, and that translates into a physical illness. Amen. Happens all the time, particularly with autoimmune diseases. Very common. You cannot go eat off the Lord's table, then go eat with the devil. Can't do it. Can you do it once? Happens all the time. What's he talking about? A repetitive practice. Practicing it. Nobody's perfect. Never, nobody lives a perfect Christian life. It's not, it's, I don't believe it's possible. If it is possible, I'm not familiar with it. I've never met anybody that did it. But I have met all kinds of people who have God's love and his grace. In fact, I'm looking at them right now. What was Paul doing in that verse? Quoting from the Old Testament in these verses. The gods were all demons. And in deliverance, a lot of people come to me and say, Brother Mike, do we have to know the name of the demons in order to get them out? <clears throat> and I said, well, it depends on the case and it depends on the spirit. But the Bible already gave you the names of the demons. You know what their names are? They're the idols of the Old Testament. Here they are. Here's the first five. You ever heard of these? Yeah, how about these? You ever heard of these? How about these? How about these? These? You cannot eat over here and go eat over there. Why not? You'll quench the spirit. You'll make him sad. You'll grieve him. That's the last person you want to make sad. Then you will open the door to the law of sowing and reaping, and something bad can happen to you. Then the Holy Spirit's going to be so sad, even more, because he loves you so much, and you, now you're being hurt. And it's self-inflicted, which makes him even sadder, because it should have never happened. Because a little leaven leavened the whole lump. A little leaven, oh boy, leavens the whole lump. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, the cup of blessings which we bless, is it not the communion, koinonia, of the blood of Christ, the bread we break? It is, not, is it not the communion of the body of Christ? Therefore, whoever eats this bread and drinks this cup unworthily is guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. Have you ever taken communion? Anaxius means irreverently. If you did, bad things can happen to you. Here's what you're supposed to do if you're going to ever take communion again. You better examine yourself 
Nakamanzo means to test yourself. Give yourself a spiritual test. Okay? If you come from a religion that routinely communions people, Catholics, Seventh-day Adventists, different religions, Lutherans, Episcopals, they just have communion because that's what people like and that's part of religion. That's very dangerous. Taking communion irreverently or indifferently can make you sick. Did you know that? And it can bring judgment upon you. What are one of the things you're going to do tonight? Repent of that if you did it in the past. God will forgive you. There's no sin that you did you can't confess and be forgiven of if you repent of it. You do not discern the Lord's body. For this cause, many people are weak and sickly. Aristos is feeble and firm. And many of you have already died. People were disrespecting communion and they were picking up diseases and dying because of it. Okay? So if you've ever done that in your past and you came from a religion that routinely gave communion out and it was just like another thing, it was a religious thing to do, if you repent of it tonight, you can get that curse off of you. We'll pray with you. He says, if you judge yourself or discern yourself, diacrino means to discriminate, discern. You will not be judged. But who's judging you if you take communion haphazardly? The devil. He sees you do it. It's a sowing and reaping sin, and he comes after you. He makes you sick. Gives you a sickness. You can get ill doing that. Who would have ever dreamt that communion would be something that would make people sick? No one would ever believe that. It happens all the time. Like this. Communion time, wafers. Okay, I'm done. No, don't do that. Do not do not do that. All right, let's get ready to close, shall we? Simon the sorcerer was a new convert to Christ. Remember? He, in Acts chapter 8, was born again. The Bible says he got saved. He was watching Philip, the evangelist, and he was absolutely amazed. Then it says he got baptized like a normal born-again Christian would back then. And then he was following Philip around which, was, again, is a normal behavior of a new convert. And number four, he had a desire for the Holy Spirit. Those are all good things, right? Okay. Well, he used his mind and his greed. He wanted to buy it, remember? He wanted to be a modern-day TV preacher. And Peter said these kind, gentle words to the poor guy. You are not part of this because your heart is not right. He had greed. If you have a little leaven, it can leaven the whole lump. Repent of your wickedness and, day oh my, earnestly petition God. See? Casual praying doesn't work with the Holy Ghost. A dinner prayer is not going to come through for you tonight. You ever had a dinner prayer? Lord, bless this meal at Denny's. Pray your blessing on the cook that made it. Pray will nourish it to our bodies. Also pray this gas clears up. And God bless our fellowship together as we eat our Denny's meal. Amen. Okay, that prayer I just prayed, that'll work at Denny's. It's not going to work down here. Denny's prayers aren't going to work at the altar. Yeah. The Lutherans and Episcopals and some of the Pentecostals, they said, well, just come down here and hold hands. Let's pray together. No, that's a Denny's prayer. 
Denny's prayers don't work. Not for tough stuff. They work at Denny's. <laughs> Somebody was praying over Denny's, though they renovated that whole system several years ago. You remember? <laughs> Did you ever eat in the, that Denny's in the 70s and 80s? Huh? You ever go in there at 1, 2 o'clock in the morning, half drunk? <laughs> you're looking around, you're going, I don't believe this. We're going to have Men in Black sequel. Okay, well, I'll not go there. But they've renovated it now. Now it's top notch. See how you get out of that stuff, sir? You following this? If perhaps the thought of your heart might be forgiven you. Listen, if you get healed tonight, if you get delivered, there's always an if there. You know what that if's based on? Not God, you. If is you. Are you going to break your heart? Are you going to change? Are you going to repent? Are you going to pray earnestly from your guts? Or are you going to come down here with a Denny's prayer? Dear Lord, thank you for the hotcakes. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's not going to get a demon out, honey. That's not going to get you healed from a terminal illness. Wow, not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Denny's prayer. How about a Burger King prayer? That, those work worse. Those are worse. <laughs> the if depends on you. For I perceive in you, inside you, you have what? Three things, he said. Man, this guy was jacked up. What happened here? Here's the bottom line. When people get saved in our society, they don't automatically go into deliverance right away or healing. They just get saved and they get put in the church system, Sunday school, attend the services, and so on. Well, they, they carry over their spirits from their sinful life into their Christian life. So now they're, they were jacked up sinners. Now they're jacked up Christians. That's the routine, see? So this poor guy here, in his defense, he had never gone through deliverance. So he still had all these other issues from his sinful life, okay? So was there hope for him? 100%, absolutely. But he had three things that he had carried over from his sinful life into his Christian life. Look at these three things. You'll be stunned to know that it's common for Christians to have them. Gall is green bile. Bitterness is picria poison. And he was bound with iniquity. I have no idea how Paul just described my counseling practice. This was 2,000 years ago. How did he know me then? I don't know. I know Christians. That's my job. And this is common for Christians. And Paul and, and uh, Peter hit this thing right on the head. But here's the great part. Uh, he begged for prayer and wanted to change. Remember that story? He said, pray for me that none of these things happen to me. He wanted... He saw it, and he, he wanted to change. I, I, I personally believe the guy got, got saved and uh, got uh, delivered and healed. Probably was holding crusades. That's in my mind. I made that up. That's what I think happened. Now, big question is, do you need to improve your koinonia? Is your little synapse broke? Are you saying, hey, I need, I need more relationship. I need sense. What happened? Where's God? Have you got that? Well, that's never God's problem. It's always our problem. Right. And once you fix it on this end, that flows fast. Bang, it comes quick. Amen. That's the joy of being in this ministry. When you get to see somebody busted up or sick, repent, and boof, the Holy Ghost jumps on them. Amen. It's amazing how quick he gets at them. Amen. Phenomenal. Why? Unconditional love, grace, undeserved, merited, unmerited favor, and koinonia, fellowship, relationship with God. That's what you're looking for. You've got two of them. The third one needs to improve. How does it improve? This way. Lights. Here's how it improves. You come to God with a repentant, broken heart. You come to God with an open heart. You come to God. Confessing, you come to God.
facing it. Yeah. You just come to God telling him you're sorry. Telling him you want to change now. Huh? You come to God, Lord Jesus, I'm tired of being a recycler. There's a couple people here tonight who are recyclers. They come here, they get delivered, they go back home, they go back to work, they go back to school, whatever it is. Frustrations, anger, disappointments, people attacking them. And they don't respond properly and the spirits get back in. Okay? Because they've never renewed their mind and they've never changed. Okay? You have to renew your mind because deliverance is not a cure-all and healing is not a cure-all. It's not designed to be. You could get delivered of a legion of demons tonight and get reinfected later in the week. And if you don't believe me, come sit in my office during the day and watch the people that come in who've been reinfected because they didn't repent of their sin. They were practicing things at home and at work they knew they shouldn't be doing. And in the spirit world, you cannot get away with anything. There, it isn't possible. You have God's grace on your life. You're here tonight. You have his unconditional love. You're here tonight. But, but, if you're practicing something you shouldn't be practicing, the law of sowing and reaping is going to catch up with you and the devil is going to make a move on you. And it's going to be ugly. And the Holy Spirit's going to be very sad that you've been hurt because he loves you with divine love. And if you'll repent of it tonight, your koinonia, your fellowship, your relationship with God is going to open back up fast because he is waiting on you. He wants you to have his fellowship. He wants you to be blessed. He wants to help you. If God be for us, who can be against us? He's for you. He wants to help you. Okay? You say, well, Brother Mike, I'm not ready to change yet. Okay, I understand that. I've seen it a thousand times, of course. Hey, when you're ready to change, we will be here for you. We're going to be here for you. We, we will stay here and pray with you. We will help you when you're ready. Okay? But on Friday nights... What I'm interested in is the people that are ready. That's what I'm looking for. Because the Holy Ghost is always ready. He's always ready to go. In Jesus' holy name. Father God, my friends are here tonight, and they came to hear the teaching about being friends with God. I know you love I know you care, and I thank you for it from the bottom of my heart. And I know tonight is healing night. Tonight, the devil has to take his filthy hands off of your children, the ones who are now ready to change and repent. They will be set free. I know it. And I'll go home happy because you helped them. And I thank you for it. Hmm? Now, if you've got koinonia problems, just come on up here. I want to talk to you for a minute. Just come here and stand here facing me. you got a koinonia problem, and you know what it is. Something's blocking your relationship with God, and you're practicing something that you shouldn't be practicing, and you know it. You know what it is. Trust me, God wants to forgive you and he wants to heal you. Come forward and I'm going to close the service. 
If you've got relationship problems with God, let's wait here for a second for you. You know that the synapse, the, the gap, there's a gap there, right? And you're willing to confess it, whatever it is, and repent of it. Come on forward, just close your eyes there. The lights are turned down YouTube because of privacy issues. We turn the lights down so no one can see what's happening, so people can have a little privacy. And your relationship with God is kind of plugged. And you're repetitively practicing something that's grieving the spirit and giving the devil legal rights to take a pot shot at you. The devil is looking at you going, hey, I got a legal access to that Christian. And I hate their guts. I hate her guts. I hate his guts. And they're giving me access to them, so I'm not going to take it. Yeah, the, the demons are smart. They're opportunists. And they take advantage of everything we do. And they watch you and they follow you all day. They follow you at night. Lord, I'll dismiss the service now. And those of you who have to leave, remember the offering boxes on the doors. Thank you for coming tonight. And I love you. And I'll see you next week for the seminar, Satan's Secrets. You're, gonna, you're not going to believe some of this material. It's going to cause quite a controversy next week. But so what? You're dismissed if you need to leave. God bless you. My ministry team's going to come forward now and help me pray real quickly. I got my people up here that are looking for the Holy Ghost. Thank God. Thank you, Jesus. Hi, buddy. Love you. Good. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. All right. Close your eyes now. Father God, let's put her at the red carpet here for the Spirit of the Lord. Father God, please forgive me. You got to confess it. That's what you got to do. You got to just confess it. You spent years sinning, years sinning. You spent years sinning, years, haven't you? Years with those thoughts, chronic negative thoughts, years of bitterness, years you've spent holding on to something you should have let gone years ago, years thinking satanic things. You spent years doing it. Years yielding to lust. Years you've spent in sin. Years. And tonight is going to end. You're going to stop it tonight. You're going to repent of it right now. But first you're going to confess it. You're going to confess it tonight. Yes, all the porn and all the lust, all the lies, you're going to confess it right now. Father God, please forgive me. I'm ready to change. I'm ready to repent. I'm ready to do it now. All the perversion, the thoughts of negativity, the lies, all of it, the bad relationships. Lord Jesus, I'm so sorry. The self-hatred, all of it, the negative thoughts, I'm repenting of it right now in the name of Jesus. All the horrible lust, all of it right now. I repent of it right now in the name of Jesus. Come on, I repent of it right now in the name of Jesus. I am so sorry, Lord. Have mercy on me right now. Have mercy on me right now. Come on, just speak it out. Come on, sweetie. I'm saying it. I'm so sorry. Say it. Thank you, Jesus. That a girl. Say it. If you'll, if you'll speak it out, that's what the Bible says. Come out. Come out of there. Come out right now. Come out quickly. Just confess it. If you won't confess it, you're not going to get that thing out of there. Come on, just confess it. You have to confess it. Say it. You have to confess it. Come on, sweetheart. Just confess it. Lord Jesus, I did this. I did that. I said this. I said that. I'm so sorry. Tell him you're sorry. He's listening to you. He's watching you. He's standing right in front of you. The Holy Ghost standing right in front of you. There he is right there. Spirit, come out of her right now. Come on out. Come out right now. Come out right now. Come out of there right now. All the self-condemnation, all the people saying negative things about you.
constantly criticizing you. Come out in Jesus' money and get out of there. Drugs. Come out of there right now. Self-hatred. People betrayed me. People let me go. Right now, in Jesus' name, I repent of it. I repent of it. Come out of there. Come out right now. I'm sorry, Lord. Say it. I'm sorry, Lord Jesus. Say it. Say it. Come out. Get out of the body. Come out right now. Come out quickly. Say it. Say it. I'm so sorry. Say it. Lord Jesus, I'm so sorry. Say it. All of it. All the witchcraft from your family tree has to come out tonight. All the evil in your family tree has to come out tonight. Just confess it. Just confess it. All the disappointments, all the sadness, all the sorrow, all the hurt from the family members, all the wounds from the daughter tonight must leave. Finally, finally, they all have to come out. Finally, right now. Finally, I'll let my daughter go. Finally, I'll release her into the hands of the Lord. I'll, finally, I'll let it go. You're getting one of them right now. Come on. Repent of it. Repent of it. Come on right now. Just repent of it. Just repent of it. Let him go. Let him go. All the negative thoughts come out of my head. Right now, every demon in my brain come out of my mind right now. Get out of my mind right now. Come out of there. Come out right now. Get out of my head. Negative thoughts. Self-hatred hatred thoughts. Desire to die. Suicide. Come out right now. Suicide. Wishing I was dead. Hating myself. Hating others. Come out. Quitting. Giving up. Cowardice. Quitting. Giving up. Quitting. Quitting before I'm done. Giving up before I'm done. Getting discouraged. Come out. Being discouraged. Come out of there. Come on out. Come on out. Come on out. Come out right now. Come out of me. Come out right now. Go, Satan. Come out. Get out of there. Get out of there right now. Getting discouraged. Giving up. Quitting. Making excuses. Come out right now. Get out of my back. Come out of my genitals. Come out right now. Come out. Come out right now in Jesus' name. Fear of the future. Fear of my life. Scared. Scared of fear. Come out. Come out. Come out right now. Come out of there. Come out right now. Come out. Come out right now. Come out. Come out. Fornication. Come out. Come out. Fornication. Come out. Come out. Fear of being broke. Fear of being homeless. Come out. Unbelief and doubt. Come out. Come out of me. Religion. Come out. Go. Get out of my kidneys. Come out of there. Right now, Satan, I command you to come out of me. Evil, I command you to come out of me. Evil, come out. Evil. Come out of me right now. Evil. Every ungodly thing come out of me right now. There it is. Let your tears go. Come on, sweetheart. Pray harder. Let your tears go. Satan, loose your hold. Satan, loose your hold of me. Satan. Come out. Bitterness. Come out. Unforgiveness. Come out. Come on out. Come on. What's the problem? I've had fibromyalgia pain. No, that's not our problem. What do you mean? Emotional. Um, I like, I'm an introvert. I like to keep things stuck. Why? I don't know. You don't trust anybody. I guess. Were you criticized as a kid or kind of. as a wife or what? My stepdad just treated me unequally. Because he had kids? He put his kids here and put your kids there? What was your stepdad's name? Ron. Ron, let's try that. Ready? Just take a big breath. What's your name? Dana. Dana? Father God, I got Dana here. And I can feel it. She's got a good heart. 
and she cares. But when she was young, the devil came for her. And he beat on her with rejection. Second class citizen. Low self esteem from her stepdad. Her mother let in a man with demons in the family. She should have never even married that guy. And he didn't love her. He loved his kids, not her kids. And he transferred this wounds in her soul in here. And because of that, she became shy and introverted. And she holds stuff in. And that causes sicknesses, illnesses. And she's going to release them tonight into your loving hands. That stepdad's going to come out of there right now in the name of Jesus. Take a breath and blow. Come out, keep blowing. Come out of there. Stepdad, come out. Right now. Come out. Unfairness. Injustice. Rejection. No love. Come out of her. Cowardice. Shyness. Introversion. Come out of there. Come out right now, spirit. Come out. Fear. Come out of there. Right now. Fear of man. Fear of being criticized. Fear of others. Lack of trust. Come out right now. I release my stepdad from my soul right now. Go in Jesus' name. Come out right now. You speak in tongues. Go ahead. Louder. Add a girl. Thank you. Louder. Good. Go. Come out. Holy Ghost, come on her. Holy Spirit, touch. Good. Holy Spirit, touch. Go. Louder. Good. Louder. Good. Stepdad, you come out of that body right now in the name of the Lord. You get out of there. You let her go. Come out. Every ugly man come out of that body right now. Every bad man come out of there right now. Come out. All the bad men, go. Come out of there. Hurry up. Come out. YouTubers, put your hand on your body right where your pain is. Right where your pain is. And command that spirit of infirmity to come out of your body. Come out. Come out. Spirit of infirmity, I command you to come out. Spirit of pain, I command you to come out. Come on, ladies. All the bad men, all of them, all the bad husbands, you're going to let them go tonight. Come on, all the bad men. Come out. Every bad man, come on ladies, I release them, all my boyfriends, all my fiancés, out, out, all my insecurities, all the low self-esteem, come out, there it comes, the demon of food, come, come out of there, go, come out. Come out. Get out. You killer. You cold-blooded killer. You're trying to kill him with food. Come out. Diabetes. Come out. Go. Insecurity. Go. Self-hatred. Go. Self-hatred. Disappointments. Go. Go. Okay, take a breath and blow. Ready? Blow. Come out. Keep blowing. Come out right now. 
All my boyfriends, every one of them, go. Come out. Come out of me. Come out of me, everybody that used me. Come out right now. Come out of there. Breathe. Come out. Come out. Leave me now. Leave me now. Go. Fear of my future. Fear of not being used by God. Fear of my family members going to hell. Come out. Fear of them being lost. Go in Jesus' name. Come out. Come out. Out. Come out. Every bad man, I command you to come out of me right now in the name of Jesus. Come out. Louder. Good. Sing it out. Sing. Every one of them. All of them. Come on. Every sin. Every failure. Right now. Come on. Out. Come out. Go. Get out. Come out. Satan, lose your hold. Dying of a heart attack. Come out right now. Come out. Heart attack. Come out of there. Satan, lose me right now. Let me go. Let me go right this second. Let me go now. Lord, forgive me. Heal me. Forgive me, Lord. Heal me. So sorry. Lord Jesus, I'm so sorry. Lord, have mercy on me. Help me. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Every spirit from Kundalini and churches and prophetic movement, I bind your power. Church demons, come out of there right now. Come out. Kundalini, come out of there. Come out of her throat. Come out right now. Out. Come out of there. Come out. Come out. Laying on of hands, spirits transferred in. Come out of that body right now. Every spirit from church, go. Come out. Every spirit from church, get out of that body. Come out of that body. And out. Out, I said. Come out of me right now. Stop shaking me and come out. Come out. Stop shaking me. Come on, pray harder, sweetheart. Let your tears go. Come on, let your tears go. Good girl. Pray harder. You gotta get that demon. He's shaking you. Get him out of there. Right now. Come out right now. Spirit, come out now. Spirit, you lose this beautiful woman right now. You let her go. Come out now. Come out of there. Come out of there. Hurry up. Come out right now. Come out. You get out of me right now. Just get mad. Come out. I command this low self-esteem from childhood that gave me diabetes to come out. Get out of my body right now. Come on out. Come out of there. Come out. Get out. Get out, I said. Come out. Spirit of fear from childhood, come out of me. Spirit of fear in childhood, come out of me. Come out. Come out. Who hurt you after your stepdad? Well, I've been betrayed by my husband. What do you do? Do you cheat on you? No, well, I don't know for sure, but. Money? No, he, he allowed some guys that were into witchcraft move in while I was out of town, which I had a prophecy before it happened, but I had forgot about it until after it was all over. And Why'd your husband do that? I don't know. They they influenced him with drugs, and then I think your he had a drug spirit at the time. Meth. Is your husband on meth? He's on no, meth? Not right now. This was like 10, 15 years ago. But Are I've, you still married? Yeah. Did he ever go through deliverance? 
Well, kind of. He went to prison for a while. To jail for a while. What's your husband's name? Andy. Okay, now listen. When you have uh, intercourse with somebody who's got demons, they can transfer in. See, the Lord delivered him when he was in county jail. How'd you get delivered? Just from the Lord coming up on him and... He got saved while he was in jail. And yeah, but did he get the demons didn't come out, did they? I, I don't know. He still has anger issues. Well, then that's kind of obvious. He's and still alcohol. infected and alcohol. His name's Andy? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, ready? Yeah. All right. Lord Jesus, please help this beautiful woman. She doesn't understand how spirits transfer. Andy is sick. The demons told him to let that witch in the house. The demons told him to take meth. The demons infected him in prison. He got saved, but he never got delivered. And right now, Andy needs to leave his wife right now and come out. And we place Andy in your loving hands, Lord, and we give him to you. He's still got spirits, anger, alcohol, God only knows what. Andy, it's time for you to leave your wife tonight. Come out of there. Andy, come out. Come out. Andy, prison demons, spirits of meth, drugs, pornography, lust, witchcraft, Come out. Andy, come out. Andy, come out. Right now. Come out. I want my husband's demons out of me, Lord. I want him out now. I want my husband delivered and healed. I have to get healed first. What's in there, hon? What's in here? You're addicted to what? Oh, okay, now, who hurt you when you were little? Who was the first one, the bad one? Was it verbal or physical? Oh, she was? What's her name? Esther? Okay, that's it. Now, what happened was... The spirits from your mother transferred in here. They transferred. They got you. When you were little, all we have to do is release your mother tonight and let her go. There, there she comes. There she is right there. Esther, come out. Esther, come out of your daughter right now. Leave. Every wicked spirit from Esther, come out. Leave your daughter, Esther's demons that turned her daughter into an addict. Come out. Come out. Come out of her throat right now. All the spirits from rehab, come out. Methamphetamine, come out. Esther, Esther, come out. I let my mother go now. I release her to the Lord. Mother, come out of me. Mother, come out. Go. Come out, Esther. Come out there. Esther, come out. Every spirit from the rehab center, come out of me. Right now. Come out right now. Every spirit from rehab. Tonight, I get Holy Ghost rehab. That's all I want. Rehab center demons, come out. Right now, go. Sadness and sorrow, come out of me. Grief and misery and fear of the future, come out. I want my husband out of me right now. Go now. Come out right now. Come out. Come out. Come out of me. I forgive my mother for the horror she put me through. And I release her from my soul right now. Right now. Out. Esther, come out of there right now in the name of Jesus. We forgive you and we release you. Come out. Esther, come out. Esther, come out. There he is. It's coming up right now. There he is. 
There is. Keep coughing. Come out right now. That's him. Keep coughing. Come out. Come out. Keep coughing. Did you repent? Can you help there's a guy, Yeah, there's a guy here who's first time here and he needs to get delivered of porn and masturbation, so I think he's a man. Yeah. There's a gal over here who needs to help with. His mom didn't want him. The guy I was talking to is masturbating. Well, has he got a ball-headed guy? Yeah. It's really, really nice. Yeah. Come, oh, she's got already got a bucket. Okay. Esther's her mother. Oh, right now. You you're not done. Come on, keep going. Come on, you're not done. Hold that. Come out right now. Come out. Come out. You're standing around. Hey, listen. Uh, who hurt you when you was a kid? Who hurt me? Yeah, real bad. Who hurt you when you were young? I don't think anybody hurt me when I was a little kid. I don't remember any parents. Well, what, what, uh, what, I told the, what I told the other lady, if you're talking about that, is that uh, I didn't know that uh, I, I, I had a, a spirit or demon or whatever come out of me. Erna prayed for me, this lady, uh, and she, she, God told her that, there, that my mom didn't want me when I was born because she was 40, my dad was 50, she did, and she's very sick. Is that sick. true? Yeah, and she's very sick. She don't want you? No, that's what Erna told No, me. I'm asking you. Me? She always loved me all her life. Yeah, that's not it. So now what? After that, what'd you get into? Life. Huh? After that, what'd you get into? When you, after you got older, what happened? After I got what? Older. Older? If I used to do, I used to do a lot of uh, pot, a lot of marijuana. Okay, of, what age? Uh, starting when 17 years old. Oh, 17. Okay, now, yeah, right. here's the problem. You speak in tongues? Yeah. You do? Yeah, Let me constantly. hear it. Let me hear it. Okay, stop. Stop. No, no. Huh? Cut. Okay, now look. Pot's a dangerous drug. What? Pot is a dangerous drug for demons. Yeah, and I've it done a lot of it. It lets them in and it gets I, in your head. I've done a lot of it, but not for like four, almost five years now. But I, before that, since I was 17. The pot demons get into your brain. They never leave. That's a lot of my problem. Yes. That's a lot of my problem. And, that's, and they're ruining your tongues. They are ruining my childhood. Yes. They're in your brain. Okay. They're extremely smart. Pot demons are smart. They get into the person's brain. Okay. And they cause what I what I was teaching on tonight, a blockage. Koinonia. They sever it. Yeah, There's I, a, I want a closeness with the, with the Lord. Yeah, because you got a good heart. Yeah, he's already called me. Uh, he's already, oh, he likes you. There's you know, no problem I mean, with God and you. He called me to serve him already. I know he likes you, but... I, I, well, I'm listening to you, and I'm understanding you. Yeah. yeah. And I know it's serious. You're, you're a very loved person. There's nothing wrong with that, and there's no problem here. Yeah. Though 17, when you were 17... You made a tragic mistake. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. And they tricked you. Okay? Yeah. So let's try a couple things. Okay, pot okay. cases are tough. Okay. Okay. Now you just repeat after me. Borraba. Borraba. Kendosia. Kendosia. Lakaba. Lakaba. Now did you notice that I was uh, speaking in short syllables? Yeah. Did you notice that I was uh, speaking in a normal language? Like I would speak yeah. English. Yeah. yeah. You that? yeah. Did you notice that your tongues were not normal language that you would speak? Huh? It's not a normal Did you notice that your tongues were not a normal language that you would speak? It sounds different than you speaking to me in English. Did you notice that? 
I'm not sure if I understand. Uh, did, did, um, did, I, did I sound? Did I sound like I was? You sounded totally different. Totally different than what you the way saying? you. No. Uh, what? Okay. Oh. The way you talk. Yeah. I'm listening to you right now in yeah, English. Yeah, I talk in English. Yeah. yeah. Did you notice that your tongues was totally different in tone and pace and style than how you talk in English? You didn't notice that? No. Try it. Try talking in tongues. Now notice how choppy it is. Huh? Notice yeah. how choppy it is. Yeah. Chop, 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 chop. Yeah. Yeah. And they notice that? Yeah, I do. Yeah. I do. Notice how mine was flowing smoother. Notice the flowing smooth, and you're going tak tuk tak tuk tak tuk tak di See the difference? Yeah. Now let's try it again. Will you follow me? Okay. 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 Bola Bashanda, Bola Bashanda, Bola Bashanda, How'd that sound? Did, was that smoother? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it did sound natural. Mm -hmm. It did sound. Now, when's the last time you had a real hard cry? Hard cry? Uh, well, I, I, I cry pretty often. <laughs> okay, now let me uh, let's listen to my question. So we're not here all night. Okay, okay. When is the last time you really had a hard cry, a wailing cry? Not a weeping cry. No, I mean, no. a wailer. Okay, okay, no, no. I don't even remember that. Okay. Yeah. Now, these pot demons steal that from the person. Yeah. Okay, they kind of dehumanize them. Uh, and here's yeah. what here's yeah, the problem. Okay. What you did when you were young yeah. and all the sins you committed after that. Right, right. The person you hurt the most was your heavenly father. Right. More than yourself or others. Right. And these pot demons keep the person from sensing that, that you that's the only I, person that ever loved you, that's you, you don't I have it. The closeness, I want yes. to, that's what I'm that's what standing they stole. here for. Yeah, that's what they stole. Yeah. That's and, them. And, and that's why I finally step, step forward. And, well, yeah. I, I've been healed a lot, but all physical. Mm -hmm. the, this hip, mm -hmm. new hip. This leg, all the things that, but that's now, physical things. That, now that, I'm, I'm looking for something. This is different. Something, I'm looking for something in here, in my soul. Clean that's my different. Soul, clean my head. Clean that's my a different soul. type of healing. Yeah, that's physical. Right. Which is, I'm grateful that's different. for that. I'm grateful. Yeah, oh, absolutely. But all in the last two and a half years, I'm grateful. But I want something different. I want what you were talking about tonight. Yes, I, 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 I got the love. I got the grace. But I want the... Kononia. Kononia. Yeah. Now, the, I want the first, that. The first step we have to go to is uh, godly sorrow, as godly Paul talks sorrow. about in Corinthians. Right, 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 right. Paul said he wrote the Corinthians a letter. Right. Remember that? Right. Yeah, oh and yeah. it was, oh yeah. and he said, oh yeah. you, sorrow, you sorrowed, but you sorrowed to a godly sorrow. Right. And he said, and look at all the benefits you got from it, and he listed seven benefits. Right. Remember that section right. of text? Right. Beautiful. Yeah. That's what they stole from you. Yeah, okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes That's, sense. It's not that you don't want to do it. You do want to do it, but oh. they stole it from you. Right. See? Right. So now what you've got to do is just take a big breath and try to relax if you possibly can. Just completely just kind of relax and let it go here. And the person that is your best friend in life and who loves you more than anything you've ever dreamed of, you stabbed him in the back when you were smoking pot, which led you into other horrible sins, which we don't have time to go in tonight, to tonight. You, you were bad, remember? Oh yeah. You don't need to tell me, but it was no. bad. Yeah, right. And that hurt his feelings. Tonight I was teaching on grieving the spirit, 
Right, Lupeo right. is the Greek word that says make him sad. Right. And tonight you're going to relax and tell your Heavenly Father how sorry you are that you hurt him. Now just close your eyes and godly sorrow. I'm so sorry that I hurt you, Lord. I am so sorry I went back into sin. I'm so sorry, Lord. I'm so sorry I hurt you. I'm so sorry. YouTubers, listen to me now. Paul wrote a letter to the Corinthians and he said, I wrote you this letter and it was a hard one. And you were sorrow. You were sorrowful. And he said it was a godly sorrow. And that's the only kind of sorrow that will allow you to get healed. You can be sorrow, you can be have sorrow over being caught, you can have sorrow over making a mistake, you can have sorrow over being sick, you can have sorrow over something you did and you got caught, you can have sorrow, but that kind of sorrow is not gonna do you any good. You must have godly sorrow that what you did hurt your heavenly father. You hurt him. You grieved the Holy Spirit when you sinned. And if you have no godly sorrow that you hurt him, you can't get healed. And that's going to block your koinonia because your godly sorrow was stolen from you. And in this poor guy's case, the pot stole it. Pot stole it in this poor gentleman's case. Right now, Lord Jesus, I ask you, to send your children godly sorrow, godly sorrow for their sin and for hurting you. They hurt you. When they sin, when we sin, we hurt you. We hurt your feelings. We made you sad. And tonight, I'm asking you to receive the anointing of godly sorrow. Sorrow that you hurt your heavenly father. Not sorrow that you got caught. Not sorrow the business failed. Not sorrow to divorce it. The sorrow is involving the pain you caused your heavenly father. That's why nothing changes for you. You're sorry you're hurting and you're sorry everything's screwed up, but you're not sorry you hurt your Heavenly Father or you grieved the Spirit. Lupeo is the Greek word, you made him sad. And that's why your spiritual life is stuck. And you're gonna repent of it right now. Father God, I'll repent in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I'll repent of not having godly sorrow, of not feeling bad for hurting you, I am so sorry, Lord, I hurt you. I'm so sorry I sinned because, not because it was wrong, but because I hurt you. Because you are the only person who's ever totally loved me, and I stabbed you in the back. I am a traitor. And you love me anyway, and I'm a traitor. Right now, in the, in the name of Jesus, receive godly sorrow for what you've done. Godly sorrow. Come down now in Jesus' mighty name. She's, um, she's okay. Hey, listen. These are drug demons. They hide down here in this area. And the fear demons usually hide up here. Okay? And... And, and when you got molested, these spirits got into your body and they're hiding right in here. Did you see you jump when I touched you there? Now you have to get them out of there and sometimes they come out through vomiting or sometimes they come out through coughing or different ways. It doesn't matter how they come out. Just go with it and get them out of there because if you don't get those spirits out of there, you're going to relapse. Now, right now, in the name of Jesus, you command every drug spirit, every spirit from your mother, every child molestation spirit to come out of you right now, no matter what happens. 
and come out of you, come out of me now, no matter what. Come out of me now, no matter what. I am not going to relapse. I'm not going to end up in jail. Come out now in Jesus' name. Come out of me now in Jesus' mighty name. Here they come. Come out. Here it comes. Hold that. Come on. Get him out of there, sweetie. Come on, sweetheart. There it is. Keep coughing. Come out. Come out. Keep going. Fight harder. Fight harder. Father God, I'm sorry I hurt you. Father God, I'm sorry I stabbed you in the back. I'm sorry I smoked pot. I'm sorry, sorry I was on dope. I'm sorry I committed adultery. I'm sorry I slept with men who had demons. I'm sorry I went to prostitutes and whores. I'm sorry I got oral sex. I'm sorry I opened the door to demons. God have mercy because I hurt you. And I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, Lord. Please forgive me. Thus saith the Lord, thou shalt not... Keep coughing. Keep coughing. Don't stop. Come on. Put your hand down. Keep coughing. Come on, sweetheart. Devils, come out. Come on, ladies. Every ugly man you slept with and had demons, you picked up a transfer, a perversion. You got to get them things out of there. Even if you're married. Married doesn't remove demons. Are you crazy? Come out. Well, I'm married. I'm this. It doesn't matter whether you're married or not. Demons like to infect people that are married. They don't care if you're married. Satan, in the name of Jesus Christ, get out of my body. Come out right now. Drugs, pot, meth. Get out. She did. What happened to her? She said she had all this pain in her body and just left. Oh, here. Hey, did you get healed right now? You did. What's wrong with you? Well, I had that fibromyalgia pain right Is that here. gone? Yeah, it's gone. Here, stand up. Now walk, walk around there and move your arms. Swing your arms around. Move your body around. Twist your body around like this. Is it gone? Is it gone? Yeah, it's gone. What's, what's your name? It's Dana. Dana. Now, how long you had fibromyalgia? Well, I had it in my back and all that for like eight months. But it's been eight right months? Here for two months. Is it gone? Yeah. Praise no the Lord. Trace of it. It's gone. Huh? There's no trace of it. Right. Okay. Now, what about your husband? Well, I mean, is your husband out of there? Oh, I guess he's out. Okay, let's try your tongues again see if they've changed. Okay, ready? Try it. Okay, stop. And just repeat after me, okay? Borraba. Borraba. Kemosa. Bakaba. Bakaba. Andoria. Andoria. Ulamasive. Yeshotaba. Now, did you happen to notice that uh, you were repeating me weren't having any trouble? Did you happen to notice that uh, I was speaking uh, smoothly and yours is choppy? Click, click, click. Did you happen to notice that difference? Yeah. Okay. It's not because it was a different language. No. Um, there's something blocking the flow of it. Okay? So this time, let's try it again. Only you follow me and then you just kind of add some syllables on your own, but make the flow better. Okay. Instead of the choppy, chuck, 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 chuck. Ready? Urama, velo, shandorama, sivela, kundarama, shive. Good! Kundarama, shivela, bakutorama, shandorama, sire. Vela, vala, ma, shandorama, sire. Kundarama, shandorama, shite. Quicker. Kundarama, shandorama, There you go. Kundarama, shandorama, shite, revarama. Good! Much better. Now, who molested you? Hmm? Pardon? I know, I can't say that out loud. Oh, but who did it? I can't tell you. Why? Is it a relative? 
Well, what's her first name? I can't tell you that. Uh, was, it, was, it your, was it a parent or a cousin or something? Hmm? Oh, cousin. Okay. Now, is, is it a male? Female? Was it fondling? Oral sex? Oh, is everything? Okay, ready? Now, when she did that to you, when she did that to you, a spirit transferred in there from her. Can you hear me? A spirit from her transferred in there. Okay? And you can get him out right now. Okay? Now, have you forgiven her for doing it? Hmm? Have you? Do you have any bad feelings about her? Do you have any bad feelings about her when you think about it? Okay, not, the Bible calls that ought, okay? So just pray after me now. Lord Jesus, please forgive me for having ought for my cousin who molested me. Please forgive me. And please forgive me for having negative feelings about her and resentments. Please forgive me. I want my cousin's spirits out of me tonight so I can be free. You want them out? Hmm? You do? Are you here alone? Who's here? Your aunt's here? That's your aunt? Does she know about what you just told me? Does she know about it? Huh? She does? Okay. Well, she's fine with it then. Okay, ready? Huh? She knows about it, doesn't she? Uh, hey, would you be willing to come in for a counseling appointment? Huh? Yeah. Okay. Now, uh, hey, would you mind getting one of my cards and give it to her? Yeah. My business cards? Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Oh, you got one? Okay, she's got, hey, stop. I'm sorry, she's got one. Hey, will you call me tonight? What's your name? Leanne. Leanne? Okay, I'll talk to you soon, okay? I'll, I'll, I, this, this is all fixable. It's all fixable. I've done this before. I, I know what I'm doing. Okay. She just got healed of fibromyalgia. Did you hear that? That's my niece. I know. That's your niece, okay. Have her come in for a counseling appointment, okay? She's okay. not responding, so she needs to be in a private. Me and my daughter are on Tuesday, I think, with you. Tuesday, okay, good. And then we've got to make her one. Okay? How's he doing? He's got ringing in his ears. Uh, he quit for three days. Yeah, he did quit for three days. Yeah, what about the negative thoughts and the fear thoughts? Did those quit? The thoughts are doing it out is it a demon? You're feeding them. We're feeding them. You can't get a spirit out that you're feeding. Correct? Right. You know, I'm working hard. I'm working hard. I know you are. But these thoughts that come into your head, what are they? What's the worst one? Uh, well, I'll tell you a thought. Uh, What's the worst thought? The worst thought, uh, you wasted your money. Wasted your money? Oh, you wasted your money. You know? All right, now. I mean, I'm just saying that's one. Now, that's one thought, right? Now, what's a good scripture for that? My God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. I have an abundance and no lack thereof. Okay, now. It'll be given to me, fresh down, shaken together, running over, men will give them Okay, now. Uh, he's in worse shape than I thought. So he's quoting scripture, but still listening to demons. Now we're in big trouble. Because he knows the truth, but doesn't believe it. Now, are you telling me that God can't restore a human being's finances? Yes, he can. That's ridiculous. I'm starting a new job on Monday. Well, see what I mean? But that thought is being put in your head. They would only do that for a reason. Why are they doing it? To discourage me. 
and it's working. Why are they putting it in there? Because it works. They don't do stuff that doesn't work. For example, they don't, you don't have a thought about, why don't you open up a flower shop? They're not going to tell you to open up a flower shop. That's not going to work. So go ahead and repent of that one thought. Go ahead. Go ahead and repent. Which thought? The thought you gave me. Uh, you lost all your money. You're never. You're never going to have any money again. Go ahead. What? Yes, Lord, forgive me. I'm asking for. I'm repenting of it. I mean, I, I will prosper. I am prosperous. I'm prosperous in Jesus' name. What's the next bad thought? Poverty has no authority over my life. It doesn't. Amen. Now, what's the next thought? Now, look, if you find the thought that that demon's using to put that ringing in there, the ringing goes like that. In fact, you told me it was gone for three days. It was gone for three days. Okay, how did it get back in? I'm not sure. What were you thinking? I, you know, I don't, you know, I, I went back to try to, you know, Think about it. That, you know, yeah, please. Was, please and, uh, analyze yeah. that. Please but, analyze You know, it's like, I can have some really good days. Then what happens? You know what it is? It's, it's... Uh, it's looking in the rear view mirror. I got to, I got to. Uh, you mean like, are you trying to say it's regrets? Yes. Of course it is. Put my hand in the plow and I got to move forward, you know? Yeah, but regrets, they use them on everybody. I mean, that's, the, that's the really it. It's, it's the regrets. It's like. Yeah, go ahead and repent of them. You can't have regrets or you're not going to get that ringing out of your ears. You can't live in regrets. They'll kill you. You gotta repent of it and get rid of them. You have to look forward by faith, and like Paul said, I forget those things that are behind me, and I reach for those things that are before me. My my, my good friend in Indiana, he got so tired of hearing you talking on the phone one time. He sent me, he texted me a scripture, Luke nine sixty two, and it says, "Put you, uh, anybody that puts their hand in the plow and looks back is not worthy of the kingdom." <laughs> Okay, well, that's true, but that's not going to apply here. Now, look, these regrets over you quitting that job, the demons are always putting it in there like the ringing in your ears. And if you receive it, the ringing stays. I love you. I know you're a lot better. I, I know you are. You're, we're, we're trying to get you 100% healed. Be 100%, yeah. yeah, that's what we'll want. I know you're better. You're doing much better. Well, yes. But the regrets are blocking your healing. All right, YouTubers, next Friday is the seminar on Satan's Secrets. Very controversial seminar. You're not going to believe some of the stuff I'm going to teach you to next Friday. And you're going to send me a couple of nasty emails. That's okay. Wait till you hear this. Next Friday, 7 p.m. Pacific Time, 10 p.m. Eastern on our YouTube channel. YouTube.com slash House of Healing AZ. See you next time.